Noah Hain Swain December 7, 1804, to June 8, 1884, was an American jurist and politician. He was the first Republican appointed as a justice to the United States Supreme Court. <laughs> Birth and early life Swain was born in Frederick County, Virginia in the uppermost reaches of the Shenandoah Valley, approximately 100 miles 160 kilometers northwest of Washington, D.C. He was the youngest of nine children of Joshua Swain and Rebecca Smith Swain. He was a descendant of Francis Swain, who emigrated from England in 1710 and settled near Philadelphia. After his father died in 1809, Noah was educated locally until enrolling in Jacob Mendenhall's Academy in Waterford, Virginia, a respected Quaker school 1817-18. He began to study medicine in Alexandria, Virginia, but abandoned this pursuit after his teacher Dr. George Thornton died in 1819. Despite his family having no money to support his continued education, he read law under John Scott and Francis Brooks in Warrenton, Virginia, and was admitted to the Virginia Bar in 1823. A devout Quaker and to date the only Quaker to serve on the Supreme Court, Swain was deeply opposed to slavery, and in 1824 he left Virginia for the free state of Ohio. His abolitionist sentiments caused him to move to Ohio. He began a private practice in Coshocton and, in 1825, was elected Coshocton County Attorney. Four years later he was elected to the Ohio State Legislature. In 1830 he was appointed U.S. Attorney for Ohio by Andrew Jackson, and moved to Columbus to take up the new position. While serving as U.S. Attorney, Swain was elected in 1834 to the Columbus City Council, and in 1836 to the Ohio House of Representatives. As U.S. Attorney, Swain became close friends with Supreme Court Justice John McLean. McLean, by the end of his career, was a strong Republican, and when the party was formed in 1855 Swain had become an early member and political organizer. In 1835, as escalating tensions in the boundary dispute between Ohio and Michigan Territory the Toledo War threatened to erupt into violent conflict, Ohio Governor Robert Lucas dispatched Swain, along with former Congressman William Allen and David T. Disney, to Washington, D.C. to confer with President Andrew Jackson. The delegation presented Ohio's case and urged the President to act swiftly to address the situation. Supreme Court service John McLean was one of two dissenters in the Dred Scott case. He sought the Republican nomination for president in 1860, losing to Abraham Lincoln. However, he recommended to Lincoln on a number of occasions that Swain be nominated to replace him on the court. This proved timely. McLean died in April 1861, shortly after Lincoln's inauguration. As the American Civil War began, Swain campaigned for the vacant seat, lobbying several Ohio members of Congress for their support. As the Oyez Project notes, Swain satisfied Lincoln's criteria for appointment, commitment to the Union, slavery opponent, geographically correct. It is also believed that Swain had also represented fugitive slaves in court. So eight months after McLean's death, Swain was nominated, on January 21, 1862. The nomination was confirmed by the United States Senate on January 24, 1862, with Swain receiving his commission the same day. In the Slaughterhouse Cases, 83 U.S. 36, 1873, a pivotal decision on the meaning of Section 1 of the relatively new 14th Amendment to the Constitution Swain dissented with Justices Stephen J. Field and Joseph Bradley. Field's dissent was important, and presaged later decisions broadening the scope of the 14th Amendment. However, four years later Swain joined the majority in Munn v. Illinois, with Field still dissenting, Swain's potential judicial greatness failed to materialize. He was the first of President Lincoln's five appointments to the Supreme Court, Noah Hayes Swain 1862, Samuel Freeman Miller 1862, David Davis 1862, Stephen Johnson Field 1863, and Salmon P. Chase, Chief Justice 1864. He is also said to have been the weakest. 
His main distinction was his staunch judicial support of the president's war measures, the Union blockade prize cases, 67 U.S. 635 1862, issuance of paper money i.e., greenbacks, and support for the presidential prerogative to declare martial law ex party Milligan, 71 U.S. 2 1866, he is most famous for his majority opinion in Springer v. United States, 102 U.S. 586 1881, which upheld the federal income tax imposed under the Revenue Act of 1864, in Jelpka v. Dubuque 68 U.S. 175 1864, Swain wrote the majority opinion, repudiating a claim that the Iowa Constitution could impair legal obligations to bondholders. When contracts are made on the basis of trust in past judicial decisions those contracts could not be impaired by any subsequent construction of the law. We shall never immolate truth, justice, and the law, because a state tribunal has erected the altar and decreed the sacrifice." He strongly supported the contractual rights of railroad bond holders. Even in the face of repudiation sanctioned both by the Iowa State Legislature and State Supreme Court. Obligations sacred to law are not to be destroyed simply because a state tribunal has erected the altar and decreed the sacrifice. For a later decision on impairment of contracts, compare Lochner v. New York, 198 U.S. 45, 1905. Swain remained on the court until 1881, twice lobbying unsuccessfully to be elevated to the position of Chief Justice after the death of Roger Taney in 1864 and Salmon Chase in 1873. After his retirement, Swain returned to Ohio. Topic: <laughs> Retirement, death and legacy. Swain is not regarded as a particularly distinguished justice. He wrote few opinions, usually signing on to opinions written by others, and remained on the court well past his physical prime, being quite infirm at his retirement. Under pressure from President Rutherford B. Hayes, he finally agreed to retire on the condition that his friend and fellow Ohio attorney Stanley Matthews replace him. His son, Wager Swain, served in the American Civil War, rose to the rank of Major General, served as the military governor of Alabama after the Civil War, and subsequently founded law firms in Toledo, Ohio and New York City. Wager's son, named Noah Hayes Swain after his grandfather, was president of Burns Brothers, the largest coal distributor in the U.S. when he retired in September 1932. Another of Wager's sons, Alfred Harris Swain, was vice president of General Motors Corporation. Another of Justice Swain's sons, Noah Swain, was a lawyer in Toledo and donated the land for Swain Field, the former field for the Toledo Mud Hens baseball team. Justice Swain's remains were buried at the Oak Hill Cemetery in Washington, D.C. The Georgetown graveyard overlooks Rock Creek, and is shared with, Chief Justice Edward Douglas White, and, Almost Justice, Edwin M. Stanton President Ulysses S. Grant's nomination of him was confirmed by the Senate, but Stanton died before he could be sworn in. Also, Chief Justice Salmon P. Chase was buried there, but his body was transferred after 14 years to Cincinnati, Ohio's Spring Grove Cemetery. A collection of Swain's legal papers, predating his service as a justice, is housed at the Ohio Historical Society, and correspondence with him is also located at other repositories. Topic. See also. Topic. Notes Some data drawn in part from the Noah Haynes Swain at Supreme Court Historical Society and Oyez official Supreme Court media, Noah Haynes Swain